The college library, always a safe haven for Cassie Edwards. It was impossible for her to imagine any danger lurking behind the rows of books at the Florida State University Library, where she worked part-time, especially in the middle of a day. It was Halloween, so a lot of students were probably out getting ready for parties at night. So there weren't too many people. There was nobody on that floor, actually, when I walked in. You walk in and you're like, wait a minute, now the lights are on. It's kind of weird. Yeah. For the middle of the day. Exactly. Um, so the lights came on and I noticed a man in a hoodie um, and he walked past me. And then I walked to the shelf where I started shelving the books and he came back down my aisle and then that's when he put his arm around my neck and he raped me. Around your neck? Yes. And so what did you do at that point? I was going to scream, but he put his hand over my mouth and he said, don't say nothing. And then he pointed to his waist pocket um, as if he had a gun. He made me count backwards from 100 and he told me not to say anything to anybody. And then he took my ID badge and then he left. Cassie savagely attacked for almost 30 excruciating minutes in a deserted library corridor. I was pretty shaken up, so I think I was kind of numb and just can't believe that this happened to me, so I felt kind of out of body experience. That experience became even more terrifying once Cassie reported it to police and found out who raped her. I was able to obtain warrants for him for sexual battery uh, with a firearm. Cops say Cassie's bravery helped them track down her attacker. Though rape kits across the nation often sit idle, DNA from hers was tested quickly and the results ultimately led to a dangerous assailant who had victimized others. Haywood Henry was more of a monster than they'd ever imagined. He murdered his girlfriend. She was shot in the back of the head with a sawed off shotgun. The victim, Malia Lindsay, was Henry's girlfriend. Malia was found dead by her young child in the home she shared with Henry. When the child entered the house, she found her mother lying in front of the front door. Henry, only 19 years old at the time, but as a police investigation reveals, he's done a lot of damage in his young life as a serial rapist. Hayward Henry was very angry, very violent, uh, was always armed when he went out. One lady that he raped, he beat so brutally she was almost unrecognizable. One underage victim told police that Henry actually showed remorse while assaulting her. She began to cry and told him that she had been raped prior and did not want to have to live through that kind of experience again, so he apologized and stopped. I would have periods where I relived what happened to me over and over again, and it felt like it was fresh new trauma. How often? Probably like once or twice a day, um, until he was caught. He had broken into another house in the neighborhood and was hiding in a closet. Then the SWAT team went in, surrounded the house, and, and went inside, and eventually located him inside the refrigerator of the home. Police later learned that Henry was wearing his victim's clothing while he was hiding out. It was never determined if he was, in fact, a cross-dresser or if he was just doing this to elude capture by law enforcement posing as a woman. But police do know Henry had serious issues with women, evident not only by his rap sheet, but by the female officers who tried to interview him after he was arrested. He got up out of the interview chair and got in a corner and pulled into the fetal position and would not look at the female officers while conducting the interview. Hayward Henry was eventually convicted of murder and seven sexual assaults and is now serving life in prison with no chance for parole. But before he was sent to prison, Cassie believed she'd always be living in fear, serving her own life sentence too. Rapists don't rape one time. They've done it before and they're gonna do it again if they get away with it. So it's kind of empowering to um, get somebody locked up and put away for something they did to you. She's now become a champion for change to get more support for victims and for funding rape kits like the one that helped catch her assailant. I think it's absolutely a disgrace that these rape kits are not tested. I think it should be priority so that we can get these backlogs of rape kits tested and that we can match them to criminals and we can get those people locked up. According to a nonprofit that is fighting to fix this problem, the state of Florida has more than 13,000 rape kits that are backlogged right now. States like California and Colorado have more than 6,000 kits that still need to be tested. 
To see where your state ranks, go to our website, crimewatchdaily.com.